something different. We're doing American Pipe Party tonight. It'll be a little different than our usual meetings. Uh, rather than have somebody from a company here, but we have two of our own homegrown pipe makers here. We got Rodney, who you all know, it, and Bob. Everybody USA, knows. at the Olympics, USA. Yeah, Robbie, Robbie has to sit at the typing table. Uh, Robbie, yeah, we need Robbie up here. Okay, USA. And we also have Bruce from Hi. Bruce A. Weaver Pipes from Nashville, Tennessee. Brentwood. Okay. Brentwood? Brentwood. It's a sub. It's, it's a sub. Y'all. Y'all. That's exactly right. <laughs> anyway, this is your chance to, to find out everything you want to know about making a pipe. There you go. Oh, well, yeah, we never had anything really like that. Yeah. We, yeah. Lied, we lied to you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Rob, there's some people here that don't know you tonight. Maybe you can tell them a little bit about yourself. Yeah, that's a good good point. Jim just... Uh, yeah, I started I started making pipes, I think, summer of 05. Just before that, James gave me some old beat-up pipes that I did total restoration on and played around with it. Um, and then... I had a few hobby blocks that were already drilled. I think actually Randy Wiley drilled them. I finished those off. But then quickly after, I started, you know, going from raw block. And uh, this red Algerian, uh, Bruce probably knows better, but check me on this. It's like from the 40s. And uh, so we're talking briar that has been aged for over 50 years. Um, most of it is cross-cut briar, and it's very dry and very light and is exceptional good smoke. And the neat thing about it is, is that um, it is such a good smoke. It makes a, a wonderful light pipe, <coughs> and <coughs> it's in, you need to know, it's in very short supply because... You can't get it anymore. You can't get it's it. I mean, it's just, I mean, think blood. about... You know, we hear all these stories about how old Briar is, but, but when you're, we're talking about Briar that's been aged for over 50 years, air aged, so it's been cut in blocks, abishons, which is different than a plateau. And example, this is a, this is a, a pipe that is made with uh, Red Algeria. And, you know, you will find the pipes, and Bruce has some, I'm sure. Yeah, he this, here's one. Yeah. It's, if you've ever looked at an old bar like and you've seen the really, really tight, 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 tight grain, most of that was that good old red Algerian briar. And when you get into it, I mean, I was going to blast this pipe, but the grain was just way too beautiful and just, wow. And it's just, I've made, I've got a lot of it, and I'm, and I'm hoarding it, I think, because I'm making a lot of them for myself, because they were smokes, period. Once it's gone, it's gone. Well, yeah, straight forward. Bruce, how do, you, how do you decide which blocks you're going to blast? It, it, well, number one, if a, if, I, if a commissioner asked me to make a certain shape in a blast, you know, <laughs> yeah, I stare, well, no. <laughs> you know, I stare up at the blocks and I go, you know, it, it might come to me, it might not. Every, every block of briar just tells you, this is what's going to be there, or this is what the type of pipe you're going to make out of me. And that's that's the best part. But normally I'll have like five blocks or eight blocks of briar on my bench just staring at me until I see something in it that I want to make out of it. So I mean, that's, every piece of wood dictates the shape, pretty much, or what you want to contort that block of briar into being. That's that's what's thrilling about it. And you could I've stared at a piece of wood for a month or more, and then all of a sudden go, oh, wow! I, I'm going to make this out of that. This is cool, and that's just what happens. Uh, but you look at the blocks and you go, well, yeah, that that's going to make a nice billiard. And I know that once I get into it, that it's going to have nice grain to it that I'll be able to blast a nice ring grain. And uh, where do most of you get your briar from? I get mine from Mimo in Italy. I think Bob and I buy together sometimes on briar. 
I've got Mimo's Mimo. wood too. A lot, a lot of us use his wood. He's a uh, third. The guy named Mimo. Oh, Romeo he's a Italian. third generation briar cutter. It's Italy. It's Italian briar mostly, but and but he's yeah. actually getting it from Spain and all, all, all over. They get it, get it everywhere. He just cuts it. He'll get burls. He has a whole room full of them. You from know, all the over thing, Europe. The thing that we hear about briar, you know, getting uh, scarce and harder to find and harder to find the good stuff. That really isn't true. What it is is that they can't find the people to go up and cut it and dig it. You know, you got to dig it out and you got to, you know, you got to let it set once it's once once you kill the, the bush because it's a bush. It's dirty and work. <clears throat> it's dirty work, and they can't get people to go up the hillsides to do it. There's just a few older guys, old skinny dudes doing it, and that's it. All the kids want to go into the city. They don't want to dig and get dirty. But Mimo, the reason we mostly buy from Mimo is because the guy's an artist in cutting briar. I mean, he looks at a block and he goes, uh -huh. and that'll, he just tells you what it is and yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. You know. And you can get different grades. He has lower grade and he has premium, really high grade. So what, do you, what exactly do you get from him? It's, uh, I should have bought one. I was thinking about bringing a block. You mean as far as the block itself? Yeah. It's just a chunk of wood. It's just, it's, and as Bruce, an artist, we go, hey, there's something in there. Bruce, it's, do you have that piece with you when you were drilling? Well, yeah. That's not well, that's this good. is a, what's called, a that, that was an Evachon is what that was. It was already kind of shaped into a pipe of what we mostly buy. I mean, this, um, they're, uh, plateaus, which part. shows the uh, the uh, bird's eye on the top and so on. When you get a when they get a burl, the burl's probably about like this, yeah. okay. And he, and and a good cutter like Bruce is saying, Mimo is he decides where to he knows where to cut that wood. It's just like a diamond cut. He knows how to cut it, okay. And then so they cut what's called plateaus, and plateaus are where you have something like this, where you got the the actual outside of it, that's a plateau. That's natural, natural top. And you know, some of these, like this is a plateau, but I cut the cut the plateau off of this one, for example. And then you get Evachons, <coughs> which are the inner part of the fire, <coughs> and that doesn't have plateau on it. Okay, and the difference is grain, the, the better grain is to the outside of the of the burl itself, the huge burl. And uh, the inner the inner cuts are more uh, the Evachons most often are uh, cross cuts like this is a cross cut pipe so you get bird's eye green and not not the straight up and down green or you get the the, the green that goes across so and so forth. Mm -hmm.